Hey there, War Gamers, Justin here painting today. Boom! I want to talk about the fire wolf. The fire wolf, the dire wolf. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. If you are new here, please alpha strike that like, subscribe, and alpha strike it like you're trying to take out the enemy mech. Poo, poo, poo. But instead, let's focus that energy and that firepower into helping the channel grow. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for having my six. Thanks for being an awesome lance mate, star mate, whatever the case may be that applies to you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And with that said, let's jump into it. Today, I want to talk about the dire wolf, the daishi, or daishi, however you say it, that uh, I like. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I am a big fan of keeping something lean, mean, fighting machine. I don't like to invest a lot of points in a unit that is going to make it a huge target for my opponent and make it obvious that they want to take it out. Um, there, You will have a couple of tent poles. Uh, specifically, when I say tent pole, I mean a unit that your list is built around, the, the pole that helps keep the tent up, right? If the tent pole falls, it's hard to keep the tent up, correct? Um so you have to support the tent pole to to keep the tent, uh, you know, the structure afloat, so to speak, or, or, or built. Um, and that is the way that I view my list. So I'll have a tent pole or two that uh, my rest of my army is, or force is trying to support, but I don't want to have all the eggs in one basket and make it very obvious for my opponent what they should shoot and take out. If you do that, uh, you end up trading material in a, uh, a non-positive direction. What do I mean by that? If you feel this fire, or this, this fire wolf, this dire wolf, and you make him a skill zero. Let's just go crazy. He's a skill zero and he's pushing 100 points. Something crazy. He's going to be taken out just as easy as a fire or a dire wolf who's skill six, right? And can't hit anything. The skill level that you give them is only increasing their efficacy at uh, combat, not at survivability. So when you adjust your skills and make units more expensive... Think about what you're trading and what you're getting, because usually if they get more expensive, that's less material on the table for you to use, that's less units for you to use, less units for you to trade with your opponent. And it's like chess, when you trade something, it needs to be hopefully in your favor and there's a reason to do it. If you uh, make everything a quality unit and you don't have quantity, your quality becomes a liability, because if they take something out, it really, really hurts. So not every unit needs to be an ace, basically. So. With that said, my view on assault mechs is usually to keep them lean and mean, good fighting machines, but I usually don't like to invest a lot of points in making their skills any better. If I've got the points, sure, because I'll usually lean on a cheaper variant if I can, but I don't want to, like for example, if I have the choice between making my Mad Cat a skill 2 or making my Fire Wolf, my Fire Wolf, Jesus, I'm going to keep doing that, making my Dire Wolf a skill 2, I'm going to do it to my Mad Cat probably 9 times, maybe 99 times out of 100, you know what I mean? Um, and the reason for that is the Mad Cat's got superior mobility and it's got a higher TMM. Uh, its HP is going to be a little bit less than the Dire Wolf but it's going to have the ability to skirt and move and be able to reposition and keep itself alive. The uh, Dire Wolf with a 6 inch move is a liability. So you're going to put him in a position where he can get firing lanes, move forward, and shoot stuff. He's not going to be repositioning like a Mad Cat. And that, for that reason, it's why I don't like to invest a lot of points into my Assault mix. They just don't have the mobility to get themselves out of danger. If your opponent wants them down, they will focus fire and take them down. Now, that said... The first of the Dire Wolves I want to talk about today is the Dire Wolf B, coming in at 51 points and usable by a variety of clan factions. Yours probably has access to this, um, so don't stress too much over that. He's got six move, one TMM, so he's got he's got one TMM on that Atlas, but one TMM ain't much. Um, he's got five five four for damage. This guy's coming in with 15 HP, special abilities. He's got Case. Flak 000, Omni, and OVL. Now, the flag isn't going to come up much. Case isn't going to come up much. Omni is not is going to let you mount battle armor. OVL is pretty nice and because this guy's got Overheat 2. That allows him to push his damage from 554 to 776 in a pinch. That's pretty nice. And at 51 points, compared to our baseline mech of the Mad Dog coming in at uh, 33 points, 333 for damage, 10-2 for movement and TMM, this guy is coming in at... Um, 14 points more it has i think about uh double the hp give or take um it's got almost double the damage at five versus three but it's got overheat and it's got uh, overheat long so it can push that to a seven seven six if necessary yes he is easier to hit 
but you've paid a little bit more points, you know, 14 points, almost 50% more than the Mad Dog, but you've doubled your HP, essentially. Uh, you've halved your TMM, and you've almost doubled your damage. That seems like a no-brainer trade for me. Um, yes, he will be easier to hit, but your opponent's going to have to invest a lot to take him out. And what have you achieved while your opponent is focusing on your Dire Wolf? You don't want to make it easy. Use cover. Use uh, trees. You know, use the buildings when you can. You know, add those layers to make them harder for them to dig this out. Make them like a tick. Dig in and shoot stuff and this is a this is a big ass tick folks he's a big boy make him difficult but the, the key takeaway from this is he's only 51 points for the damage he brings to the table and that ain't bad it ain't bad and because you didn't invest hypothetically you didn't invest making him a skill you know three or a two maybe a three but probably not uh, you've saved those points for other units you haven't put all your eggs into a fragile basket so yes he's got a lot of hp but the better his skill is, the more expensive he is, the more units you can bring to bear on the table, and the more likely your opponent's going to say, hey, that guy does a lot of damage. I can focus fire him down a lot easier than other units. If I shoot him and take him off the table, he's gone. Now, your opponent might do that anyway because he's easy to kill. And you know what? That's true. He is easy to kill. But because you didn't invest those points into making him super-duper damage killy killy, they didn't get to take those points from you for free, right? You put those somewhere else, and those points are still trying to make you points back. And that's the reason, again, why I keep my Assault Mechs pretty lean. Now, if that particular variant isn't your jam and you want to spend 5 points more, the Dire Wolf Prime, you can't go wrong with it. comes in at 56 points, 5 points more, uh, 6 move, 1 TMM, just like the previous one. Damage is 664 versus 554, not bad. We're coming into 15 HP, special abilities, case, indirect fire, zero asterisk, so it's very, very unlikely you're going to be using IF. Omni and overheat long. This guy comes in at five points more. He's got one more point of damage at short and medium, and he's got overheat four. Double the overheat value of the B for only five point difference. That allows you to push your short and medium to 10 points of damage and your long to eight in a pinch. This guy's going to draw some heat. Your opponent's not going to want to ignore him um, if they if they have the choice to. Like they're going to try and focus him down because of the damage potential. He can pump it out. But again, when you're looking at our baseline mech, the Dire Wolf B is only coming in at 14 points more than our 33 point Mad Dog for basically double the survivability and double the damage. This guy is 100% double the damage. He's coming in at 23 points more than our Mad Dog at um at 56 you know so it is what it is um but double the life double the damage double the overheat value over the the b variant and he's still got ov long if you got the points to spend and you got five points just floating around and nowhere to put it you can upgrade your b to a prime and that prime's going to do you just fine he's going to lay down the hurt he's going to lay down the pain he's a lean mean blast a machine and finally the last variant, if you absolutely want to go balls to the wall crazy and you want to spend the points, you can fill that Dire Wolf T coming at 66 points. This one's 33 points more than our baseline. He's double the points. Now, this one in particular has eight move, which is really, really nice. Now, this is a Dark Age era, uh, Fire, or Fire Wolf, Dire Wolf which explains why it's got a slightly different uh, profile. So it's got a eight move, one team M that puts him into range. Like this is, this is, he's, he's moving faster than inner sphere stuff at this weight class in general. And he's got one team M on that stuff, which most inner sphere, uh, salt mechs don't nine, nine, four for damage overheat. One, this guy's coming in with, um, 15 points of life here. Uh, case flak two, two, two flak may or may not come up for you. Um, I think that's Light Probe, LPRB, Omni, and Recon. So um, you'll get some uh, use out of the uh, the Probe and the Recon if you're using uh, those special rules or if your opponent's got stuff that those will be effective against. But that is um, usually a niche case. Um, so yeah, I don't get into those too often. I think the only thing that I get into uh, that sometimes comes up is ECM because that shuts down C3 pretty well. But the the recon and the probes and stuff, it, it's, it usually only comes up if you're using advanced stuff typically. But um, that's not what makes this guy particularly crazy. Um, the movement is nice. The nine raw damage at short and medium. And when you're playing at medium range or when you're going to be firing mostly at medium range most of the game... Um, that's brutal, and you don't have to overheat to get it. You get those 9 points of damage every turn. You can push it to 10 uh, with an overheat. You could do that multiple turns in a row without it being detrimental, whereas the Prime, at 6 damage, medium, and overheat 4, it can hit 10 damage, but it's going to shut himself down if he does it. Not a big deal, but that's what's going to happen. The, uh, the big problem with this particular variant is he has 66 points. It's going to make him... Uh, pretty much he's going to be in your tent pull category 
the offset to that is the fact he has an eight move, which is really, really nice. That, that does help offset it because he has some ability to reposition. Um, but he is a liability because he's still still pretty easy to kill. Only has one TMM, but he dishes out a lot of damage. So this is a reasonable contender for a tentpole, tentpole status if you want to bring in an assault mech to invest your points in. That said, that said, the uh, Direwolf Prime and the Direwolf B coming in at 51 points for the B and 56 points for the Prime, you might be able to actually make them a skill 3 and come in at similar point total to the Direwolf T at 66. Granted, he'll do more damage, but these might be able to do consistently equal to or more damage at a similar point total with a better skill. So you have to consider what you want to do, what you want to invest, and how you want to have your odds in your favor. So that's three Direwolves that I like, things that you uh, might want to consider when building your lists. If there's a Direwolf variant that I did not discuss, perhaps it's one for a faction that I don't play, and so I haven't seen it because you know I'm going to lean towards the Clan Wolf variants. And the Wolf's Dragoons variants, because that's what I play, um, these just happen to also be useful, usable by um, pretty much the majority of the, um, the clanners. Um, but that's why I look at what I look at. If there's a variant that you like and you want to share it with me and you've got a justification, let's get a chat going. Let's get some creative juices flowing. Maybe you'll expose me to a variant I never consider. Maybe there's one with a cool ability that's not optional. Maybe it's just an ability that's just the core standard stuff. Um, and you're like, hey, this one's really, really cool, Justin. Check it out. I would like to know. If you happen to take any of this advice and try these units yourself uh, with your um, your forces, sound off in the comments below. Let me know how they performed for you. Let me know what you think. Would the dice gods were in your favor if they weren't? I'd love to still get the chat going and hear about how they performed for you. That said, folks, as always, it's time for me to sign off. And if I don't shut up, I'll find something to ramble about. So let's go ahead and sign off today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Hope you learned something. Hope you got some creative juices flowing. As always, keep painting your models, keep rolling your dice, and I will catch you guys next time. If you guys are still sitting here watching this, let's take a moment to uh, put a pop up here to showcase those wonderful Patreon supporters here. We'll let that scroll here. And uh, thank you so much for supporting what I do. That's super awesome. I really do appreciate that.